Hello and welcome to another NGEN 7 math lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 6 on the percentage that a part represents. Now this is a natural extension of what we've been doing lately, right? And what we've been doing primarily is saying, okay, you know, we've got some total and I want to know what, you know, 35% of that total is or what 22% of that total is or 8%, that seems to be one of my favorites, of that total is. Today, what we're going to be doing is saying, here's a total, here's a part, what percent does that part represent? Does the part represent 85% of the total, 32% of the total, 57% of the total? We're even going to look at a whole set of exercises that, you know, get to like what grade did you get on a particular quiz or test or whatever, because that's, that's what that's all about, right? If I, if I got 22 out of 25 points, well, what percent of the total did I get? So that's what we're going to be getting into today. A lot of what we're going to be doing is going to be, uh, is going to be done, at least the calculation portion of it, on a calculator. So make sure that you've got your, your scientific calculator ready to go. And let's get right into it in the first exercise. Here we go. Exercise number one. In a class of 25 students, 18 of them brought in permission slips for a field trip. Letter A, what fraction of the students brought in permission slips? All right, so this, this is a piece of cake, right? Again, the fraction is always the, prop, the part divided by the total. So in this case, right, the fraction of the students who brought in permission slips is 18 25ths, right? You know, even if I could reduce it, I don't particularly need to in this case, and I can't reduce this particular fraction. But now let's take a look at letter B. Determine the percentage of students who brought in permission slips by changing the fraction in A to an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. All right, well, you've done this plenty. So what I'd like you to do is change this fraction into an equivalent one where the denominator is 100, and then tell me what percentage of the students brought in permission slips. All right, well, the whole point of a per cent is it's a per 100. Right now, we have a per 25, right? 18 per 25 students brought in permission slips. But I want it per 100, per cent. So I'm going to do 18 over 25. Of course, I can multiply the denominator by 4 to get this out of 100. And then I must multiply the numerator also by 4. Now again, you know, if you need to, you can do that 18 divided by 4, sort of over on the side of your paper, um, or you can just take your calculator out and do 18, there we go, times 4. Either way, I'm just trying to like get 72 out of all of that, 72 out of 100. And that means, of course, that it's 72 per cent, right? And again, the idea is very simple. If there were 100 students instead of 25 students, 72 of them would have brought in permission slips to maintain that same ratio, 18 to 25. Now, let's take a look at letter C. So letter C says, convert the fraction you found in A to a decimal using na -na -na -na, long division, right? So I, I want to do a little bit more long division, okay? Um, then we're going to use our calculators from there on out. All right, so what I want to do is I want, to cal I want to convert this fraction into a decimal using long division. All right, so why don't we, why don't we do that one together, All right? So here we go. I've got 18 25ths, right, which is the same as 18 divided by 25. So let's do that. We've got 18 divided by 25. Again, it's going to be important for us to put some decimal points here. So now I have to think about how many times uh, 25 goes into 18, that's zero times, right? When I do the subtraction, I get 18, and then I drop a zero down. Um, put my decimal point up here. Let's see, I'm going to go with 7. 7 times 25 is 5, 3, 14, 17, right? I'm going to subtract. I'm going to get 5, 0. Now, of course, 25 goes into 52 times. That's going to give me 50, and I'm going to run out of space. So extend my board a little bit, get zero, and I see that 18 25ths is equal to 0 0.72. All right, so 0 0.72 is simply the decimal version of 18 25ths. But now, letter D. 
how does your answer in C correspond to your answer in B? So let, let's take a look at this, right? 18 25ths is the same as 0 0.72. But we also figured out that 18 25ths was the same as 72%. 72% and 0 0.72. So in fact, how does our answer in C compare to our answer in B? 0 0.72 is simply the decimal version of 72%. And it's one of the really great things about decimals and percents. You see, percents are per 100, but decimals literally are just in tenths and hundredths. So when I see 0.72, that is 72 one hundredths, and so it corresponds to 72%. And this gives us a fantastic way then of figuring out the percent that a part represents. I simply do the part divided by the total, right? That gives me a decimal, okay? And that decimal then is the decimal version of the percent that the part represents. And we're gonna get a lot more work with this, including work on our calculator in future problems. So let's take a look at some. Fractions, decimals, and percentages are just different ways of expressing how much of a whole that a part represents. That's it, right? Fractions, decimals, and percentages really are all the same thing. They're just different ways of expressing the same thing. And let's look at that in exercise number two. In a jar of coins, 18 out of the 40 coins are dimes. Express the fraction of the coins that are dimes in three different ways below. Letter A as a fraction, letter B as a decimal, and letter C as a percent. Use long division to determine the decimal. All right, I promise you, we are gonna use the calculator eventually, but let's take a look at this problem without our calculator, because it's pretty easy. Now, if we want the fraction of the coins that are dimes, that's easy. There are 18 dimes, right? And there are a total of 40 coins. Now. That is a perfectly good way of expressing the fraction that are dimes, 18 40ths. That's great. This fraction can be reduced a little bit, and I'm gonna do that simply because it'll make it easier in the long division to convert it into a decimal. Now, the best I can do is divide both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by two, and I'll get the equivalent fraction, 9 twentieths. Now again, either 18 fortieths or 9 twentieths would have been a particularly, would have been good ways to leave this answer. There's nothing that says express it as a fraction in simplest form. But it's gonna be easier for me to do long division on this particular fraction than this particular fraction. So let's figure out the decimal by doing long division here. All right, so here we go, right? I'm gonna do nine divided by 20. So I'm gonna have my nine divide it by 20. All right, I'm gonna put some zeros after here to get ready for that. All right, 20 goes into nine zero times, subtract and I get 90, whoops. Now I'm gonna have uh, 20 times four, that's gonna give me 80, subtract, and I'll get 10, drop another zero. 20 goes into 105 times, 400, subtract and I get zero. So there it is, 0 0.45, right? So the fraction of dimes, fraction of coins that are not dimes are 9 twentieths. The decimal proportion that are dimes is 0 0.45, and the percent, which should now be very easy, 0.45 is the same as 45 divided by 100, so the percent is 45%, all right? Any one of these ways would have been a correct way to talk about the proportion of coins that are dimes. Oh, 9 twentieths are dimes. 0.45 of the coins are dimes. That's kind of the strangest way of saying it. Or 45% are dimes, all right? So let's keep working with this and keep figuring out the percentage that a part represents. Here we go, fraction, decimal, percent, connection. All right, let's go through this. If W represents the whole or the original quantity, so the whole thing, all the kids in the class, 
you know, your entire rent, whatever. If W represents the whole and P represents the part of the whole, then P divided by W is the fraction of the whole. Literally, the part divided by the whole is the fraction of the whole. Its decimal form then will tell us what the percentage is if we just take that part divided by the whole and multiply by 100, right? We can easily figure out what the percent. Now, let's use our calculators a little bit to help us with these problems. So let's take a look at exercise number three. Liliana surveyed 75 students and found that 51 of them preferred chocolate ice cream and 24 of them preferred vanilla. Letter A, determine the percentage of students who liked chocolate and the percent that liked vanilla. Show the calculation, but eval evaluate it using your calculator. All right, awesome. So let's do the chocolate one together then have you do the vanilla one. So first things first, let's think about just the fraction of students who liked chocolate versus the fraction who liked vanilla, right? 51 of them preferred chocolate out of 75. So literally, 51 divided by 75 is the fraction of the students who liked chocolate. Now, let me actually just do this division on a calculator so I can figure out the decimal version of this. This is simple, right? I've just got 51 divided by 75, and that's 0 0.68. All right, so that is the decimal version of the proportion of students who liked chocolate. Now, what's the percent? Well, the percent is just going to be that times 100. Now, if that's tricky for you, if converting between 0.68 and 68%, and don't forget that percent symbol, don't ever tell me that 0.68 is equal to 68. That would be weird, right? But if you ever have problems going from here to here, it's as simple as taking your calculator, taking that 0.68, multiplying it by 100, and that then will give you sort of the percent. So the percent is 68, all right? The 0.68 is the decimal version of that fraction. So now what I'd like you to do is figure out the percentage of the students who liked vanilla. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, well for vanilla, the part is 24 and the total is again 75. So for vanilla, the fraction of students who liked vanilla was 24 out of 75. All right, in terms of a decimal, I'm just gonna do 24 divided by 75 equals, come on, there we go. 0 0.32, all right, there's my decimal, and that is equal to 32%. All right, so simple enough, and if you got 32%, well done. All right, let's take a look at C at a result that is not all that surprising. All right, or sorry, not letter C, letter B. Letter B. What do the two percentages that you found in A add up to B? Why does this make sense? All right, so what I'd like you to do really quickly is add this percent to that percent, come up with what their total is, and then if you can, try to explain why that makes sense. Pause the video now. Well, hopefully this isn't a great surprise. 68% plus 32% equals 100 percent. All right. Now, the reason that that makes sense is that all the students, all the students are accounted for. So, all students are taken into account, right? A hundred percent if I say that there's a 100% chance it's gonna to rain tomorrow, then it's gonna to rain tomorrow, right? Everything's been taken into account, everything. And similar, if in this problem, if we had 75 students, 51 of them preferred chocolate, and let's say 20 of them preferred vanilla, then they wouldn't add up to 100% because I wouldn't have taken into account all 75 out of 75 students. But in this case, either the students like chocolate 
or they like vanilla, and there's no other options that are given to them. So when I add up those two percentages, either they're gonna add up to 100, or we've left somebody out. You know, we've left maybe multiple people out, but not in this case. All right, so let's keep going. Let's take a look at our last problem. Exercise number four. A school did a survey to find out what percentage of students would drink strawberry milk if offered as a choice. They found 63 out of 175 students would drink the milk. They will offer strawberry milk if at least 40% of the students surveyed would drink it. Should they offer strawberry milk? Justify your answer. All right, awesome. Pause the video now and answer that question. Well, let's see. We were told that 63 out of 175 students would drink strawberry milk, okay? We need to know what percentage of the whole that 63 represents. Now, it doesn't represent 63%, but the fraction it represents is 63 out of 175. Now, if I wanna get at what percent that is, I'm gonna do 63 divided by 175, and that's gonna be 0.3. 3, 6. Now again, that's the decimal version. The percent version is 36%. So my answer is definitely no, the reason being because less than 40% would drink the milk, right? And that is often what we do with percentages. We use them to make decisions, you know? So we might make a decision that if, you know, 80% of people, you know, are gonna buy breakfast before a certain time, then we're not gonna offer breakfast after that time, you know, if we were running a restaurant or something like that. But ultimately that means that when we have some data, like 63 out of 175, we have to be able to create a percent based on that data. And in this case, because 63 out of 175 is only 0.36 or 30, 6% and we've set our bar at 40%, then the answer is no. They should not buy or offer strawberry milk. All right, let's wrap this up. Now, what we saw today was a very basic and important idea. If you want to know what percent that a part represents, then we need to take that part and divide it by the total. We oftentimes set that division up as a fraction, right? You know, but even as it's set up as a fraction, you'll hear, you'll hear teachers and people in every day say things like 63 out of 175, 63 170 fifths. That's kind of a strange way to put it, right? Now, in order to actually get the decimal version of that, we simply have to do the division, which gives us the decimal. And then, either using that decimal and just looking at it, or by multiplying it by 100, we can then figure out what percent the part represents, all right? We're gonna see that a lot in the next lesson where we start to work with some messy decimals as if they haven't been messy enough already, you know, and messy percentages. Until then though, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.